Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. Today we're talking about Promises That Are Broken by Marvel and Disney. Black Panther's coming up. Promise broken. Why? Because the movie Black Panther, which did do very well, and it was a cultural kind of phenomenon, strangely it wasn't really as big as it was promoted as to be big. If you take a look at... Um, historical charts. This is from Hollywood Reporter talking about the gross revenues for uh, Marvel films. You'll see that um, where is our friend uh, Black Panther? So Black Panther is, uh, he did well, very well. Uh, Black Panther did a little bit more business in 2018 than Iron Man 3's uh, 2013 uh, box office. 1.34 billion compared to 1.21, which is more. No question about it. Uh, did close to doing uh, Avengers Age of Ultron, but nowhere in the universe of, of some of the other uh, bigger films. And you would have thought to the extent that they were you know, promoting and, and uh, talking about, we saw it everywhere in the media, well, Black Panther is doing phenomenal, it's doing phenomenal. Okay, it did do a lot of money, but it, it's basically equivalent to Iron Man 3, which is you know, not in the top um, five uh, Marvel movies. But that said, People liked it. You know, it was something um, that was unique. It was the first major black superhero outing. Blade uh, came years and years before, uh, but it was successful. Unfortunately, with Chadwick Bowman uh, passing away at such a young age, such a tragedy, uh, it put Marvel in a position where they had to kind of figure out, what are we going to do with this franchise? I mean, we want to continue it. Of course we want to continue it. Um, but... How do you do it? Do you recast it? So they decided, no, they're not going to recast it. But the problem is, if they don't recast his role, if they don't have a new Black Panther, which, look, I haven't seen Black Panther yet. It's coming out in a couple of weeks. We'll see what happens. Uh, but no one's expecting that there is a new Black Panther, a new male character. So they have basically... The Black Panther franchise, which they're calling Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which is really not Black Panther. <laughs> it's the world of Black Panther. Uh, almost like, well, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really pretty unique because it's, it's the world of the character, but it's not the character. And there's definitely something about, you know, we've seen, look, multiple uh, actors play Spider-Man is a good example. Why, why would they just not recast this? I mean, I know it was sensitive and he was very young and it was a very successful movie, but, you know, I mean, if you're going to have these uh, characters, like they outlive their creators. They outlived the guys who um, created the comic. They're going to outlive probably all of us and the characters will continue to go on, you know, 100 years into the future. You've got to recast the characters. Otherwise, if you, you do this Marvel female agenda thing and there's nothing wrong with female superheroes, the best treatment of a female superhero I think in that I've seen has been Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. That's for me. Uh, the first movie. Uh, fantastic. I mean, really, like that is what you would do. Not necessarily 100% to what the original creator of Wonder, Wonder, Wonder Woman wanted and, and what she was completely about, but for the disasters that you've seen with them, with, with male and female characters and some of these translations, it was fantastic. Why would you not recast this? They didn't, they didn't recast him. And now there's an expectation that the toys and the merchandise are not gonna do well. And this is coming from Bounding Into Comics and we'll get into this article. And, and why would the merchandise not do well if you don't have a male Black Panther? Um, well, because toys based on female characters do not sell. I mean, it's, it's not something, um, there's no judgment there. It just doesn't work. And toy companies are apparently starting to get a little bit nervous. Merchandise companies are starting to get a little bit nervous and they kind of need to deal in this world of, um, having strange, things where Marvel promotes something, but what they wind up delivering to you 
as a consumer is not what you wanted. The, the problem really with this is you can't sell merchandise that represents a brand or a property and do well with it unless there's a good fan response to what the content is. Now, you know, I cover a lot of Warner Brothers Discovery. Uh, Black Adam just came out this weekend and it did solid business. It did on the high end. It did 67 million domestically and a total of 140 million uh, internationally. That is decent business. And that's very important. But one of the most important things about this movie, aside from it's, you know the first major feature coming out from um, the new management of um, Warner Media, is that um, the fans really like it. The fans like it a lot. Now I did see this movie. I don't know. Um, you know they spent a lot of money to make this movie. It was a two hundred million dollar movie. If you spend two hundred million dollars on a movie. You want to gross, um, you know, seven hundred million dollars on it. I mean, that, that or more. That would be the objective. Based on these numbers, does it look like this movie is going to do seven hundred million dollars internationally? I don't know. I don't know. I can't say yes. I can't say no. But what I can say is, even if it winds up making less money compared to uh, Black Panther, they're going to be in a better position with the DC universe than Marvel is going to be with the Marvel Universe because basically you have this um, haze of confusion related to the Black Panther, related to Marvel's brands altogether. You know, when you do something like they did with She-Hulk and they disappoint and distress and attack so many of their customers, so many of their fans, a failure with She-Hulk to impress their audience, to impress their customers, affects the business they're gonna do on Black Panther. It may not necessarily affect something that they would do with Star Wars, that's an, another whole story, but the Marvel Universe, the Marvel brand, all of that's tied together. I'm not quite sure that uh, Kevin Feige and um, Bob Chapek and the other guys that worry over this really understand how interrelated these properties are with respect to how financial results, while important, but acceptance and appreciation by their fans, not just the older comic book fans, but the people, they just created millions of fans for a male black, Black Panther. Well, they don't have that anymore. How could you miss that? There's a lot of sensitivities to the guy passing away, but how could you miss that when you're managing brands? You know, the actor looked like and represented what the character and the comic book property was and what made sense about all of it. And now they've thrown that away. They've again broken another promise. I'm not sure if there's anyone that trusts uh, Marvel and Disney to execute well on anything that they have. I've been doing videos recently. Um, I did one... Um, about the panic over at Marvel now because they're realizing the woke content's really not working. They can't just mix everything uh, and retell everything in some sort of a social justice manner and, and attract uh, fans. You know, if you want to know if something is, quote, woke or not, and there's a big debate in my comments about what's woke and what's not woke, look at the audience scores and the audience satisfaction when they go see the movie. When the audience is happy, it's essentially not woke. <laughs> it's, you know, it could still sort of be woke. You know, Black Panther was what Black Panther was. And it was true, essentially, to the comic. I mean, there were, I'm sure there were changes and subtleties that escaped my notice. But when I went to see um, Black Panther, I basically saw what I expected. I thought some aspects of it were silly, even by comic book standards. But I thought, you know, it was well within the range of what you would expect. And I'm sure plenty of people were really satisfied with it. I'm really going to be surprised if people are satisfied with this. I don't know if it's going to be as bad as She-Hulk, um, but it could be quite bad. I've seen um, clips of, of uh, Ironheart that's going to be introduced in this Black Panther Wakanda Forever world where the character is shot for shot duplicating what was in uh, Iron Man 1. 
uh, which, you know, in a way is an homage, but there's a fine line between an homage and just basically a direct ripoff of some other artist's work. And it's all Marvel's property, so it's not like it's, you know, a copyright infringement or something like that. But it's, you, you get no sense of self of the new character you're introducing. You just get a sense of, like, duplication of something else with just, like, you know, a different skin color on it or a different gender on it. it well, that That's not good. It, it doesn't work. And Iron Man is a property versus Ironheart is another whole issue. They are not going to see success with Ironheart. Nowhere near the success they had at Iron Man. As we just said, the success of Black Panther, to give you a sense of how big this is, the success of Black Panther, which we all know was a cultural touch point and a massive by Iron Man 3, is close to Iron Man 3 in 2013 versus 2018 dollars. That's how big Iron Man was before they decided they didn't want to pay Robert Downey Jr. anymore and they just wanted a female character anyway, which is something they've been doing in the comics and now they're doing it in the movies. And they're going to see, they're not going to see another $2.79 billion movie. I hope I'm wrong because I'd like to see success for everybody who's trying to promote comic book stories. You know, I, I'd love to see it, but I don't think it's going to happen. I really, I, I mean, I don't see how it could happen because they're not keeping their promises with their fans. They're not establishing things and then building momentum on them. They're, they're trading off of old momentum. They're not giving you anything new. And it's not just Black Panther. Okay, I, I want to get into this story about Black Panther. I'll do that right now. All right, this is about Black Panther merchandise. It's coming from Bounding Into Comics, a really great website that I'm, I often am checking out. I recommend you do the same. Rumor, Marvel scaling back Black Panther Wakanda Forever merchandise plans out of concern. The sequel's lack of Takala may alienate black male audiences. Well, do you think it might? Do you think that people who went to go see Black Panther went to go see it because of Chadwick Boseman? He's, he's, he's actually Black Panther. He's a black man. And, and like that could affect black males being interested in it. Yeah, I, I certainly think that that's a reasonable assessment. But let's see more detail. Through titular, though titular African superhero's brand has done gangbusters from Marvel's financial back end ever since his debut, it has created a lot of support and tapped a brand new market for Marvel. A new rumor suggests that the studio is scaling back its merchandising plans for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, out of concern that the sequel's focus on the franchise's female characters could partially alienate the character's key consumer demographic of black men. Black men, like white men, we don't, I, I'm a white man, we don't identify as women. We identify as men. We'll watch movies with women, that's fine. Like I said, Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, great. But it's if you made Wonder Woman a man, um, you probably wouldn't hear me saying the same things about it. F you would not. Following the untimely passing of original Black Panther actor Chadwick Boseman, a major topic of discussion among both fans and analysts was just how Disney and Marvel would tackle the future of Wakanda's resident hero without a f the franchise's star. Well, obviously they couldn't. They should have just recast it or rename this movie something more on brand, something closer to the world of Wakanda, that would work. That would be correct in terms of the marketing and promotion. It would probably not do as well, but you have they have to think past how this impacts the entire relationship that their customers have with the Marvel Universe, the Marvel films. Because when people are disappointed with this film, it, it's another damage to the brand as if She-Hulk and Captain Marvel didn't do enough, and, and so on and so on. Yet with the slow trickling out of the film's promotional material, it soon became evident that the sequel would center around Takala's female allies, including his sister and his former love interest, Nakia, and their newfound companion, Riri Williams, the female Iron Man. However, despite the Black Panther's brand having become one of Marvel's biggest Particularly among black audiences, it appears that Wakanda Forever's lack of a male lead and, to a certain extent, Bozeman's performance specifically has the studio taking a far more cautious approach to the film's merchandising. Oh, are they nervous about this? I guarantee that. According 
to alleged insider sources whose insights were relayed directly to Bounding Into Comics by entertainment reporter and insider Valiant Renegade, who has a great YouTube channel, by the way. Definitely check it out. Many licensed product manufacturers have cut back on their Black Panther products versus their more standard mapping for their categories with respect to what they would usually do with a property with an, in, an upcoming over a billion dollar exposure push, meaning the film doing over a billion dollars at the box office. This means either limiting Wakanda Forever's line depth, less SKUs, which are less products, less merchandise, and or smaller production runs, which entail higher per unit costs, but reduce inventory exposure, he added. Meaning to say that they would not uh, produce massive amounts of the toys, they would produce less of the toys, which would cost them more per toy to produce, or whatever the product is, um, but then they would be less at risk of getting stuck with unsold merchandise. Surprisingly, though, he admitted that those with the colder feet are those who bring the most value added to the product category, such as action figure manufacturers. Value Renegade then revealed that it, this fear even extends to categories that rely on printed visuals to deliver the license, generally cheaper with less upfront cost loading. That might be something like um, shirts or posters or something like that. Recent projects have shown lower returns, so the lower volume business case will likely be the most profitable once costs are all in, he said. In other words, should there be a huge merchandise breakthrough, which can vary significantly by category, by product category, I mean, well, manufacturers will just chase it. So if something works, then they'll just try to make more of it. You know, Disney um, completely missed the boat with um, Baby Yoda uh, merchandise when people were going berserk over ba Baby Yoda, which was a great example of a solid introduction of um, something new to the Star Wars brand that just worked. People liked it. Um, male like male men like it. Women loved it. It was ideal. They didn't have merchandise ready to go at the time for whatever reason. Um, wanting to keep things secret about the character, or whatever it might be. Um, but you know, they, if they can't merchandise it, they can't merchandise it. It wouldn't just be Disney that failed at something like that, by the way. That's many. Uh, Companies will put something out, it'll become a surprise hit, and they won't be able to get product to market quickly enough. As to why Marvel was expressing such caution with Wakanda Forever's merchandising, Valiant Renegade turned to the supposed focus group's findings and explained that the company's fears stemmed from the fact that Black Panther is not a property or a mantle, but rather a very specific character whose appeal is very male, even more than usual. This seems especially true with Black Men, he highlighted. Clarifying a more intricate focus study would be needed to confirm this observation as fact. Quote, the perception of the hero is not only from his movie, but is also the sum of his on-screen exposure. So all these other little bits and pieces of uh, cameos that he's done in all the other distributed uh, Marvel properties, again, they've never, at, at Disney and Marvel, they've never seen a universe lose momentum and collapse. To get it back, they're gonna find is not possible because the way that you build the momentum are things like these cameo appearances. And one hit with one property then creates interest in all the other properties. So it builds momentum onto itself. But again, when the momentum turns, there, there's no way to get it back because it affects everything else almost simultaneously. A lot of people have commented, they're not gonna do anything Marvel. They are, some people are like, listen, I quit Marvel a long time ago. Other people have said, look, I, I'm after She-Hulk, forget it. I'm, I'm not interested in anything Marvel. This is gonna add up. You know, it's one person here, it's one person there, but there are a finite number of people spending money on content. It's just true. Valiant Renegade continued, sadly noting that comics don't score here. So it doesn't matter if you're in the comics or not. Black men have the strongest relationship with the character with an interesting, strong pop on the father-son dynamic, he said. Black men identify with the black king, strong male figure, word association, noble, strength, how the character holds himself. They admire that in a hero. It's inspiring to them. Why wouldn't it be? To this end, the insider detailed that the above carries over to fathers and sons as seeing the movies was a great bonding experience for many black men and their sons. You, you see where this is going? In mom groups, this came up as my husband, boyfriend, ex, took their son to see the movie with the character in it, sometimes twice. Again, that's what's gonna be a hit. Are people gonna see it multiple times or not? I will tell you this much. 
they will do that with Black Adam because of the nature of Black Adam and how well it was executed as an action hero movie. Are they going to be doing that with Wakanda forever? I wouldn't bet it a nickel on that. I, I mean, I would, I would happily bet heavily against it. These outings would sometimes include a detour to a toy retailer on the way home. Oh, okay, so you have a father and son moment. And now all of a sudden you're saying like, hey, let's go to a toy store and buy a Black Panther toy because it's, it's a remembrance of that positive experience. You can't sell merchandise to people when you break your promise to them. You can't. They're disappointed. They don't want more of nothing. You've given them, you promised them something, you've given them nothing. Merchandise is more of something. Well, not in this case. So not only would Black Men see Black Panther Entertainment, uh, sometimes multiple times with different groups of friends, because again, it's an experience with your friends and it's relatable, but would also take sons, nephews, etc., to them. Valiant Renegade added, now that you rack up multiple viewings, some very nice focus stories to hear right there, meaning from the focus groups. Interestingly, as to the ongoing debate of whether or not Marvel should recast the role of Black Panther following Bozeman's death, Valiant Renegade revealed, many don't know that Mr. Bozeman has passed. And those that do are totally for a recast because it's about the character. They recast Batman and James Bond all the time. He quoted of one alleged focus group attendee, totally spontaneous, zero overthinking with respect to Mr. Bozeman, all accord him due reverence. Yeah, he died. I mean, well, Disney can't bring him back to life. Noting that sup the superficial nature of these focus groups results were the result of analysts having only looked at the character as part of the overall Avengers IP landscape. Val Valiant Renegade ultimately asserted that the key thing through was all the male elements. Black men are even less likely to buy female IP driven merchandise for either themselves or their sons. Fact, he informed them. Despite this demographic mismatch, Marvel still reportedly has hope that the upcoming Black Panther film, while female focused, won't be written in a way so as not to deliver on the above. Of course, it's not going to deliver on the above. You know, the only reason why people are interested in Black Panther is because it's an identifiable, sing identifiable single character. It's not because it's the world where Black Panther was in and like, oh, you're of this world? I'll buy this. That's like the Star Wars toy that you're least interested in that you buy as a completist. That's what they're going to be doing. They're going to get, you know, a fraction of the results. I don't know how the movie's going to do. I know this is going to do a lot, a lot of damage to the Black Panther brand, to Marvel, to other related Marvel projects. Because people are not going to... This is, again, subversion of expectations. The thing that Disney specializes in now. Breaking promises. However, to this end, Valiant Renegade concluded his report to us with the particularly interesting observation that... From what we've seen, those who know the key story beats while keeping their NDA's non-disclosure agreement thoughts to themselves are among these those proceeding with the most caution. So the people who know the story, because they're on the inside of uh, the company and the production, know that, um, yeah, you better be cautious because this is going to be a problem. Fans can find out the results of Bozeman, of Marvel's bozeman less roll of the dice when Black Panther Wakanda Forever hits theaters November 11th. So we'll see what happens. But what I'm telling you is this, in a real straightforward, simple way. Um, you establish something with a customer, and it doesn't matter if it's movies, comics, whatever it is, product, any kind of business relationship. People have a certain expectation. As they said in this focus group and the focus group questions, not even everybody knows that Black Panther's dead. You know, they have a lot of, uh, excuse me, the Chess Bo Bozeman, unfortunately, is dead. He passed away. So... When you see there's a new Black Panther movie coming, you know, you're like, oh, okay, let's go see that again. Let me tell you, some people are going to be in for a real surprise. And this is also not a short movie. This happens to be over two hours. Uh, and, and people will wind up walking out of this film when they see it's not what they want it to be. If nothing else, you watch for the audience score on this and watch for the critics score. The critic score will probably be the opposite of Black Adam. The critic score will be high on this, on Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and it'll be low on the audience score. And then you'll see, oh, they're trolling, they don't like women, whatever their comments are going to be, but you know that's what it's going to be, as opposed to the opposite with Black Adam, 
where you've got a low critic score, but a very high, very high, 88%, 90% audience score. This movie, Black Adam, whether it does any good profits for Warner Brothers Discovery or not, immediately, I have no idea. I don't know what they spent to market it. I don't know exactly what their expectations are. I'm going to wild guess it and say at least they wanted to do a 600 million to make a little bit of money uh, worldwide um, with hopes that it could do better. But it will do no damage to the DC universe of films. Alternatively, you, you're going to see the next Star Wars here pretty soon. You're going to see the next Star Wars with um, Marvel properties and probably they'll die off one at a time. Uh, but my goodness, my goodness. So let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always appreciate your comments. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.